Hi guys, this is Mario, I'm the creator of Polystrips from Cures, um, a new kit for a model, and I'm going to show you how to use it. Uh, as you can see here, there are a bunch of buttons, and I'm going to show you the functionality of all of them. So let's start with the very first one. Uh, this button is just a collection of uh, standard model viewers that are just uh, replicated from the main interface, as you can see here. And here there are only three of them that are Bispline, Bezier, or standard cures. Personally, Bispline are uh, my favorite kind of cures, but of course you can uh, uh, use Polyline as well if you want from the pen tool uh, option, the, the type option Polyline. So let's start and make a cure. And as you can see here, this mesh right now is not selected. So if you try to, to attach a poly strip from Cures operator right now, nothing will happen. So remember that you need to have um, your Cure button selected. Now, if I create a new poly strip mesh operator, we will see that actually uh, the mesh operator is not attached to the uh, source curve item, but it is attached to a new item. This is because uh, this mesh operator can actually take as input multiple items um, as specified in the source meshes uh, tab of the mesh operator. This is because um, you can have multiple curve items for uh, whatever reason. Like when you have when you start having a lot of curves, it's kind of uh, difficult sometimes to to read them properly and therefore to edit them. So it's nice if you can uh, group them and be able to uh, hide them or show them uh, at any time as, or it's nicer, even nicer to assign a different wireframe color per item. And for example, uh, now that we have created a cure, we may as well uh, create another item with a different cure, like here. And now that we already have a poly strip created, I can just create, uh, um, select the item that contains it, and instead of clicking on you, I can assign it. And now this poly strip is generated by these two meshes. And of course, every item can have as many mesh you want. So um, let's open the duplicate panel and maybe the just make a simple array and everything gets updated in real time. There we go. Let's see some option of uh, our uh, polystrip. Uh, also, uh, I want to remove um, this item from the poly strip because there are too many uh, planes right now and it's kind of difficult uh, to understand what's going on. So I can remove it from our poly strip operator. There are many options here and most of them um, are about so, um, okay. so there are a bunch of options here and like the most immediate one that you'll want to play with are the number of segments and uh, like uh, by default it's uh, two segments, uh, two horizontal segments and ten uh, vertical segments and uh, the reason why it's two instead of one is that maybe you want to play with the uh, band par parameter so um, something like that and you can change uh, the size for example and the twist and these are all uh, uh, values embedded in the in the poly strip mesh operator, but actually you can uh, override these values uh, with these weight tools that we'll see later, that we'll see soon. 
So, uh, another uh, value that you see here is the normal direction. The normal direction, uh, it's, it's the direction where the planes are pointing immediately at the, at the root of the curve. So, let's select the curve. The root is, uh, is this uh, vertex with the slip dot circle here. And um, if I go back to the poly strip, I see that the option that we have as a normal direction is up vector or root vertices. In the future, there will be even more. I want to add vertex normal maps uh, driven by a background mesh. But for now, these are the two available options. The up vector option basically orients the, the plane at the root uh, toward one of the three axes, so like x, y, and z. But the fault is um, set on y, that's because um, that's what you would use when you, uh, pretty much all the time, when you make, well, make poly slips for hertz. This is the up vector. Instead, the other option is the root vertices. Uh, this basically orients the strip uh, towards to the normal of the plane described by the first three vertices. This is a more stable way to um, retain the orientation of the plane. So as you can see, um, this curvature is given by this very first vertices. Now as I've added uh, one more So this is uh, very good because um, if you select the root, for example, and then you expand a bit, and when you're using the local manipulator, this will be oriented to the very first three vertices, and these are the ones that define the, the orientation of the plane. It's a very straightforward way to, um, to decide the orientation, the uh, original orientation of your of your uh, strip. While, for example, up vector, I show you that if you if you rotate if you rotate the strips, it's kind of floating, trying always to orient itself to the UI plane. Anyway, this is just a choice and it's up to you. And now let's see, another important option is the root segment. And this again, like it's because uh, making errors, I noticed that um, sometimes with generated strands, you need more detail where the more curvature is, uh, which in the case of uh, real time errors is usually at the base. So you can add uh, one or a to at the base and uh, just to have a bit more uh, resolution and UBs will be um, updated as well in real time. Now another thing I want to show you is that of course for extreme cures what happens is that you get strange reformation. So there is a, an extra parameter here that you can just use and it's basically it basically smooth smooth the normals along the curve and to get a just nicer result. Of course be wary that the more uh, uh, 
iteration you use, and the more expensive it is, and so it will slow down the the process. But a lower value is still worth worth a try. And now let's let's talk about the way tools. It's uh, one of the of the nicer features that the plugin has, and so. Let's let's take a look at the list of weight maps, and the weight maps are actually not assigned to the uh, mesh operator, but are assigned to the source mesh to the source curve item. And so let's select the curve item first, and if I click on size, you'll see that a new map is generated, like this GFC curve size is the is our weight map that we'll use to control. Uh, the sides per vertex. So now uh, what it does is basically to create a weight map um, of this specific name and then it activates the weight tool and this, uh, the weight stored in the curve will be translated into uh, the relative size on the polystrip. Another thing we can see now is that I'm using a linear interpolation between uh, between these uh, these vertices but I can choose a different a different blending so right now there are available linear and cosine and so which is just a smooth, smoother interpolation. Another nice thing that uh, you can use is, uh, of course, like uh, you can select the tick, for example, and uh, choose soft selection, and you can combine model tools with this with this tool. And if you don't like the weights because they are just weights, you can just uh, delete them, for example. There we go. With a bit of small thing, and then you can remake it as you prefer. Now, as you can see here, there is a kind of a mistake happening um, immediately after we clear the weight for the for the for the curve, uh, because uh, when you clear the weight, the um, uh, the values basically go or the weight map go to zero and uh, for the specific case of the sides weight map like the sides weight map is actually it should be a set of values that are um, the when they are set to one um, then the the size is, is, is exactly the same uh, of the global one specified in the mesh operator so the weight map acts as a multiplier of the global parameter that you find in the mesh operator. So a way to solve this is uh, to just set back the weight of uh, the whole weight map to, to one in the specific case of the of the GSC pure size weight map. Twist. And maybe you also want to add some some bend, some bending. And of course there is something that works very well if you have uh, more segments horizontally. All right, and this is pretty much I think you need to know about the strip generation. Now that uh, we have a strip generated, another cool thing we can do with it is the, just to convert it to, to curves as well. Like this was a feature requested by a user, and uh, um, I was happy to introduce it because I think it was a very good idea. So uh, the conversion will basically take every vertex in this uh, plane, and what you see is uh, is what you get. So. Let's say I want to convert to 
base ply. Now I have a new mesh that just got created that way. This is right now it's only common, but uh, I'm planning to to add this feature as a um, as an option of the mashup. So uh, this mashup in the future will have a um, geometry option where instead of the plane you can have the curves and that will make will make it a bit easier so now that i have uh, this item like i can show you some other tools like some other uh, curve tools that we have and for example i have added a thinning tool that basically works this way so there is a thinning parameter um, and the random parameter they work in tandem so if you uh, scroll your mouse horizontally like you'll see the curve diminishing regularly if instead you scroll your mouse vertically you'll see the random parameter um, pushing in and because of course like this is maybe not a precise way to do it like if you uh, move the mouse di diagonally like then you'll see both of them increasing at the same time so a more precise way to use it is actually to press and hold the control button and so if you init initially slide the mouse toward uh, horizontally then you just see the thinning going uh, raising and instead like the same with uh, you hold and press the control button and you uh, slide vertically and you will be sure that only the uh, random value will be um, modified and then there is uh, the seed value which basically changes the randomness uh, it's, a, it's a parameter that uh, drives the random the random value and now before uh, uh, going forward we can check um, with, with the other tools I'm going to show you how to edit UVs with the interface okay so um, about to be is uh, by default all the strips generated are uh, laid out between zero and uh, one in U and V, and um, here I see that the UV uh, UV UI is actually divided into small sections. One is where you uh, assign a tag, like it's basically you assign a preset to uh, your selected curves, and um, the bottom part of the UI basically is uh, what you edit um, the values for a specific tag. So let's let's make an example. By default, any kind of curve that doesn't respect a, a certain name convention, naming convention, and the, this naming convention is a UV and then a digit, an integer. Um, by default, all the other tags would be treated as default. So if I select the fold and I slide my UVs here and you see I can already modify these, uh, the UVs for all the strips at once because right now all these, uh, these curves are uh, um, tags that are not in, uh, that doesn't, they don't respect our name convention. Now, as soon as I assign a new tag to some selected curves, a new value, um, a new UV tag, will appear in the edit section. And now we can edit the curves separately. Like that. Ah, here one little, tri one little tip. I think this might be a model bug, I'm not sure, but uh, you can do all these um, uh, modifiers to, uh, 
with this interface if you have uh, a model viewer open like if you have a viewport like a 3d viewport open because as soon as you uh, stop using a 3d viewport this eventually will uh, stop updating you'll see like if you play with it um, enough uh, from time to time uh, the UV the UV viewport stop to be updated so you need to have uh, both viewport open to actually not run into any problems but to be able to better modify these, uh, these trees let's assign a, a picture so for example um, the way I like to do it is I assign a, uh, an item mask and I go into my shader tree and I add a layer so I will load a picture like this one and as you can see now I have a, a very simple uh, texture, hair texture loaded and but to be able to uh, modify the UV I need to, to have the mesh up selected so let's select it and what you will see is that once you you have it selected um, the, the picture will, uh, will disappear but you want to actually see the the text the, the text that you're working on so just uh, manually select the backdrop in this case uh, it's hair D so now that I have uh, selected the picture um, I'm also going to remove the overlap of the polygons and the fit polygons option so I can see uh, through the polygons of my strips basically only the wireframe now I go to UV and uh, I'll just position uh, my two available tag right now that are default and UV0 so I will put uh, this one in this, uh, in this squad so I don't really know what the values are There we go. Uh, maybe just a bit less like that. Perfect. And then I'm gonna check the fold and maybe put it down here. Hopefully in the future this will be uh, visual. So like I'd like to have just a interactive tool where I drag it without setting manually the values but for now this is the easiest way I found and there we go so now as you see we have a um, two group of UVs maybe I can even add a couple couple more so I select the curves and then it's important that you assign the tag to the curves it will not work on the uh, you, you can't assign directly the tag to the mesh or, but to the source mesh so let's say I'm going to assign what was it UV1 all right UV1 as you see uh, will be a game between 0 and 1 so and I want to use uh, maybe just this one let's see there we go So now that we have a pre-ordered set, I can actually um, select whatever curve I want, let's say, and I just want to assign a pre-existing tag. So we, we made this preset and we can 
just assigned to to whatever cube we want. So uh, this one maybe it's one and so on. And if you want to see um, the result with transparency, remember that you need a picture with a with an alpha channel like this one, as you see. And remember to set it to RGBA. And if you go to advanced, done. Also use double side if you want to. These white lines that you see, they are, these are actually the cures. So just hide them if you want to see the result with that. And I think this is all about UV generation. Alright, so um, this is a model I'm working on and I like to um, follow the guidelines provided by an artist called Tarkan Sarin. I hope I pronounced it properly and um, his idea is I, to, to, to draw curves on a proxy surface and then basically from, from there to, to attract those curves back to the, towards the, the skull. So um, what you can do is just uh, hide everything that where you don't want your curves attracted in this case, like uh, I just keep on our um, hair proxy, and then you want to set the constraint to a ground with the point option, and then you start drawing curves with whatever tool you prefer. So, in my case, again, I like the V spline, and then yes. So on, so I create as many as I want, you don't need to be ultra precise here. You could even sketch the curves, but I have noticed that um, the model sketch tool is uh, doesn't really like the undo, so I try to not not choose it. There are various ways you can do this, like personally I think the best way is to do it manually, like it can be boring of course, but it grants you the better result, but there are other tricks you can try. I show you one for example that is pretty cool. And um, let's let's take one of these curves, actually maybe three of them or something. Like this. I'm going to uh, them down to the ground of course. okay and I'm going to put them like all at the origin this and now um, I'm going to divide them in three different items
there we go and the idea now is to use our uh, proxy head here as a replica generator right so let's say I'm going to add a replicator and I'm gonna say um, I'm gonna use as a I can use as a point source the geometry directly but in this case I'm going to first create um, let's see First, going to create uh, a surface generator for this surface. There we go. And now, in my replicator, I choose uh, my surface generator. And as a prototype, uh, I want to choose these three items. So, first of all, I need to make a group out of these three items. So, choose. And now I'm going here, and as a prototype, instead of selecting a single item, I can choose And of course I have loads and loads and loads of cures, these are way too many, I don't need as much of course So I'm just going the surface generator and uh, pick just a few um, Let's see uh, da -da -da. Instancing pretty good. Text uh, lay. There we go. And I want our spacing. Uh, let's see. But let's, let's play with these values. Five, a bit more, right? And maybe even more than this. So one meter. Then uh, remember to see what you're drawing because otherwise it's impossible. All there we go. So this is a way. And um, maybe a bit more. 75 there we go remember that you can of course uh, select uh, you can drive the density with a weight map so in my case now uh, I'm going to try the replicator to hide everything all right so just going to put it here This is a proxy mesh made in ZBrush, by the way, as you can imagine. and I show these guys here and then in the properties of the um, 
of our surface generator that should be you can use the replica density there we go done now um, we can create a mesh out of it I, I know that there are also ways to, to drive the orientation and uh, but for now let's use it as, as it is oh, you can also change the size so uh, this is pretty good because uh, here of course the, the hair would be a bit um, smaller right so a bit shorter so you want to, to play with this uh, size beam up here as well and once you once you're done you can go to um, item replicators and say freeze replicators and now we have some curves done here of course you you will have to, to clean it up a bit and there are probably yeah um, all instances we don't really want that and just change the type to mesh it is going to take a while I'm telling you all right then you can uh, cut them okay and now I just need to use a single item for this there we go and throw this away yes thank you yes to all Perfect. so now maybe I can delete the curves that I don't need to be honest but yeah let's let's keep it this way for now and another thing that I may want to do is uh, uh, to just um, uh, push these curves on the background so let's constrain like with a point option in and um, one thing uh, that I see that model change is that before as soon as you activated the transform tool um, everything was going to be uh, constrained immediately to background when the point option was was selected now instead you actually have to move a bit something like this all right and as i said it's better if you do this manually but it's worth it right and now that i have all these curves as you see all these curves are actually floating and let's go show the face so and this is not what we want we want like these curves to actually be attached to the scar so for this reason we have the uh, these are our generated curves and I'm going to attract them to the to the face so select first the curves item then the background item and then you select the curve to background tool and here you just there we go it was easy right and now I can just attach our um, policy generator and it seems to work it's pretty good item mask um, I just created a shader for uh, the strips to to see them double-sided and at this point well what I can do is just to to change the parameters so I can uh, um, not this one and just select the curves and uh, adjust the twist
And the Kilt to Background tool is a um, it's a very natural to uh, constrain like a, a, a curve to, to a background or to, um, actually to deform it because it's based on a on a IK algorithm. Uh, it's, it's just a fabric fabric algorithm. So which means that it's very fast, as you see. Like um, there are a lot of curves in this uh, in this level, like a dozen curves and. It's quite easy to constrain them um, interactively, and you can get really a nice flow because it's not only the root, the root curve, the, the root point that will be stitched to the surface, but the whole curve will uh, gradually move to the to the background. And to make an example, like if we look at this scene here. Um, and I create a sphere or or anything really. Um, then I can make any kind of curves, and I select first the curve, then the background, and as you can see, like by default, like it um, it keeps the tip in position. And only the root will move towards the to, uh, towards the background to the last selected mesh, actually. And um, I show you. But at the same time, you see this is the root. At the same time, like if for whatever reason you want to apply a, a like you actually want to lock the length, like this is actually an I key. This is an I uh, an I key. Um, That is moving towards the background, so it will uh, retain its length. And at the same time, you can uh, choose to actually move the tip towards the towards the background, and still it's very natural. Um, the the movement is very natural. And if you don't need to to lock the length, then just keep it as it is, and it will interpolate naturally so it's a very simple tool but very powerful and I'm planning during um, during the V1 cycle I'm planning to add it as a mashup as well because I think this will be very beneficial to uh, motion graphics not only for hair uh, not only for uh, real-time hairs but like it will be very beneficial to generate all sorts of paths that can be animatable and uh, um, and yeah and be very helpful for a uh, motion graphics as well. So I think I covered pretty much all and and I hope you liked it. Um, if you have any questions please uh, remember that there is a, uh, an official thread on the Foundry community forums. There is a support area in the Gamroad website where you can purchase the plugin. And there is also a close Facebook group, still for support, that you can access once you um, once you purchase the product. And thank you so much for watching, guys. And I'll talk to you soon.